This is Singharaja, the rainforest that is part of the world's natural heritage. The forest canopy is breathtakingly impressive. Of the species of flora found within the forest, more than 70% are unique to Sri Lanka. So are the fauna. Of the 20 or so species that are unique to Sri Lanka, discovered so far, 19 are found here. Singharaja does not solely belong to our generation. It must be preserved for future generations that follow us. If this magnificent forest falls prey to the greed of destructive and mindless man, it will never be possible to recreate or regenerate it. Singharaja not only adorns Sabaragamua, but is also a peerless and priceless national treasure. It must be preserved for posterity as it forms part of the natural heritage of man. Here's yet another beautiful landscape. This formed the background to an award-winning film some decades ago, Bridge on the River Kwai, which won many Academy Awards. It was made here. Only what is left of the bridge, constructed as part of the set, can be seen today. This river, which was Kwai to the Hollywood filmmakers and to us, only one branch that runs to join the Kalani River flows placidly as it has always done. Samanala is not only a precious endowment of nature but also a place made sacred with the visit of Lord Gautama Buddha. It is also a place holy to Christians and Muslims who hold it in equal veneration just as Buddhists do. The history of Mount Samanala goes far back to the times of the mythical king Ravana, Lord of Lankapura who legend says forcibly brought Sita, the consort of Rama, the king of Ayodhya, and kept her confined in the wilderness of the holy mountain. Whatever it was, the truth is buried deep in the sands of history. The season for the pilgrimage to Sri Pada begins on the full moon day of Vesak in the month of May. Whether the climb is done during season or out of season, it is an exhilarating adventure. There are two main routes to reach the summit. One is along the Ratnapura Gili Malay Road. This road can be approached from two directions. One is along the Kuruvita Eratna Road to Sita Gangula, and the other along the Ratnapura. Palabadra Road to Lihinihela and Sita Gangula and both run from here 
to Heramitipana and Mahagiri Dambe. The most traversed route is Hatton Maskelia to Nallatanni. Then through the Dragon Archives to Sita Gangula, Gettampana and to Mahagiri Dambe and thence to the summit. This journey to the mountain is a must at least once in your lifetime. The Pinnawala Elephant Orphanage, though not a natural sanctuary, is a foster home provided by man to the elephants left destitute by man's cruelty and greed. People come here in large numbers to see the fun and frolic of these innocent victims. On the Balangoda Kaltota Road, turning at the 14th milepost, the Kuragala Rock can be reached. This rock is an important landmark in the island story. It marks the northernmost reach of the Buddhist civilization that spread from the Rohana or Ruhunu Kingdom founded during the reign of Mahanaga. During the early period of its history, it was known as Tanduleya Pabbata or Visulaba Pabbata. It was also said to have been a rock fortress of the legendary King Ravana. All that is left of it today are three caves said to have been the dwellings of Arahats or saints. Undoubtedly, the pleasant landscape and the serene surroundings may have been immensely conducive to the life of contemplation of the resident Arahats. Today, it is gradually falling into ruins. These remains on the lower level of the Royal Budugala Viharaya at Kaltota show traces of an ancient monastery. Some feel they are that of a preaching hall. The moonstone found here is a splendid creation. The history of this place can be traced to the reign of Mihindu V in 181 AD. Sankapala Vihara on the Ratnapura Hambantota Road has a history going even deeper to pre Christian times. Folklore records that Pusadeva, one of the valiant commanders of King Dutugamunu, deposited his conch at this spot and built this Vihara. Hence the name Sankapala, the singular word for conch. The inscription found here records the association of this place with Pusadeva. Close to the inscription is carved the figure of a conch. The place fell into ruins consequent to foreign invasions but was renovated by King Sri Rajadi Rajasinghe of Kandy. 
was offered by him to the venerable Karatota Dhammaram. The Sutigara Dagaba at Dadigama was built over the house where King Parakrama Bahu I was born. According to Dr. Paranavitana, the eminent archaeologist, this is the only Dagaba built entirely of earthen bricks. Of the two Dagabas built in memory of kings, this is the second. The other is the Elara Dagaba, built by King Dutugamunu as a memorial to Elara, whom he vanquished in battle. This fascinating construction is near the second milepost on the Nelundenia Galapitamada Road. Many of the relics found during the excavations of the site are housed in the museum in the vicinity of the Dagaba. One of the unique creations that could be seen in the museum is the elephant lamp. It was found during the excavations at Kotavehera. This is Royal Delgamo Vihara. In the wars between the Singhala kings and the Portuguese, each vied for the possession of the sacred tooth relic. The high priest of Delgamo Vihara, it is said, deposited it in a specially turned out Kurahangala, a crusher made in stone to process millets for safekeeping. Five kilometers on the road from Mawanella to Hemmawatagama, the rock on which stands the Devanagala Royal Monastery can be seen. The Vihara can be reached along a series of steps running up to 500 feet right up to the summit. From the summit, a panoramic view unfolds as far as the eye can see. In the misty distance is the Batalegala or the Bible Rock. The Devanagala Vihara was built during the times of the Polonnaruwa kings. The well-known Devanagala inscription is also found here. In the chapel, built on wooden stilts, are found exquisite wall paintings. It is undoubtedly the nation's obligation to preserve and protect this historic site. The Salawa Royal Monastery was built in 89 BC during the reign of King Valagamba, according to folklore. But there is no acceptable evidence to confirm this fact. Records, however, show that it was renovated during the reign of King Kirti Sri Rajasinghe of Kandy in the year 1747 AD. 
frescoes are also found printed in the Candian tradition. This rock inscription is said to be the last of its kind. Danagirigala Cave Temple is on a hillock north of the Batalegala Road, 12 kilometers to Mawanella town and close to the Kandy Colombo Road. Although this viharia has a history going back to pre-Christian times, what remains are constructions carried out during the reign of King Raja the Rajasinghe of Kandy. The frescoes in the Kandyan tradition show a close affinity to those at Degaldorua and Dambulla. A short distance along the Avisavel Kegalla road is the Barandi Kovil, a place of historic importance. When the Buddhist clergy who were displeased with the conduct of the king turned against him, the king became a Hindu and on the advice of his Hindu counsellors is said to have built this Kovil. From what remains of the original Kovil, it could be surmised that in all probability it was never completed. However, the remains show that it would have been architecturally similar to the Hindu Kovil built during the Polon Narua period in the 10th or 11th century. Maduan Walawa or Manor House, close to the 14th mile post on the Ambilipitiya Suryakanda Road, is well over 300 years old. It has been renovated many times and according to a village headman who saw the impressive mansion at the time of its last renovation and improvements, there were in it over 300 rooms and halls. The floor was laid with ceramic chips. The main features of the mansion are the so-called ebony palace that housed the visiting guests the main bungalow and the great hall or Mahamadua. It is said that during reconstruction and final renovations made by the Mahadisava, the upper floor was laid out on the lines of Mahatma Gandhi's mansion and the lower floor with its porticos and corridors was modeled on the mansion of Ahelepola. It is also said that there were 21 enclosed courtyards. All the rooms were exquisitely and expensively furnished. All the door frames were short in height, compelling those who enter to bend their heads. The Disava, who had contempt for foreigners, is said to have paved the floor with ceramic tiles that had figures of foreigners. In the front portion of the mansion is the Mahabangalava, where the Mahadisava held important meetings and conferences. Here is a color portrait of the Disava, exquisitely framed. Close by is a portrait of Kalawana Maduanwela Kumarihami, his spouse. The 20-meter-long corridor running on the southern wing 
leads to the judicial court. Above the bench is the British coat of arms. The Disawa sat on the bench as judge. From the time the sun came behind the holy mountain at dawn, right up to dusk, when it went down from here at Maratanna, we travelled far and wide across Sabaragamua, enjoying its breathtaking natural beauty, visiting its fascinating places, steeped in history, all of which was a truly exhilarating, invigorating experience. Isn't it then fair to say that one must be truly blessed to see with one's own eyes the splendor of Sabaragamur?